One Piece was a hit. I enjoyed it. How about you? That's right, folks. We're going to talk about One Piece. I finished the entire eight hours. It's quite a bit. And I don't like to just straight binge things. And I want to give you my honest review. And honestly, it was pretty darn good. And I think there's a couple reasons for that. So we'll go take a look at it. Let's dig a little bit deeper just to get an idea of what's going on here. Let's take a look at it, folks. The Netflix show. Again, we know Rotten Tomatoes is a fraud. And that they bribe people and yada yada. But the point is, is you can glean things if you look enough at the numbers. Only 53 reviewers reviewed it at 85%. Normally, on a big movie, there'll be like a 350 reviewers. 10,000 plus audience score of 96%. Seems like the audience is pretty happy with it. Why, you ask? Why were they happy with it? Well, first, let's talk about the story. The Ichiro Oda story of One Piece. Now, I've never watched the manga, so I don't know anything about it. So you manga purists and you anime purists out there, I never watched the manga. I never read the manga, never watched the anime. So you may yell at me and tell me, oh, this is terrible. But I did watch most of Cowboy Bebop, and I did review it. So that did not work out so well for Netflix, but we think we know why. But One Piece is the story of a young rat boy, rubbery boy, who wants to become king of the pirates. At one point in the world, there was a super pirate named something gold, Charlie Gold or something. I don't know what his name was. And he collected all this booty. And it's called the One Piece. And it's in some place called the Grand Line. And this kid grows up like... 15 years later or something, and puts together a crew, and we go on his wacky adventures. As he's a rubber boy, and his cohorts are all different. He's got Nami, the navigator. She's a hot chick, a little confused about what she's doing. Um, there's Zoro, the green-haired ninja dude. There's two other guys, a cook... <laughs> And a dude shoots a slingshot and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I'm not super familiar with it, but I know what I did like. So they go on some wacky adventures. I think it was interesting at the end of every episode that they give you a map to kind of give you an idea of where things were going on. Because, you know, if you know anything about The Witcher, not knowing where anything is anywhere, but then you compare it to Game of Thrones where they give you an idea of where things are happening... And we know they're in the ocean and they're going to different islands and doing different things. Um, but, you know, it just kind of, it's nice to have a sense of location and locale. Why did they do better in this one, though? I think it's because they listened to the creator. If you read anything about Cowboy Bebop, the creator came out afterwards and said that he had notes for the show and they did not consult him. And then this one, it very clearly states from his own words, he, sa he said it was okay for it to not be a one-to-one -one ad adaptation, which I think is smart. You know, it's, n it's not going to take... It's not going to be easy to do. Um, it's going to, you know... It's, it, 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 it's, oh, it, anime is extremely difficult to adapt, obviously. But this was... And this was such a wacky strange thing they did say that he he oversaw every uh detail he was an executive director and he was initially reluctant to do it and what he said uh his strategy was a live adaptation of a manga doesn't need to simply reenact the source material on a one-on-one -on -one basis involves really thinking about what fans love about the characters the dynamics among them and being faithful to those elements a good live-action show doesn't have to change the story too much. The most important thing is whether the actors can reproduce the characters in a way that will satisfy the people who read the manga. I think it it did well, so I hope the audience will accept it. And this is before it came out 
uh, to be a hit, as it appears to be. I'm surprised they haven't renewed it yet, but there is things going on with the strike that make it confusing. What's the other thing that I think people are looking at with this? Why was it a success? It, I would say the low bar. You had Cowboy Bebop that was such a spectacular failure. And when people saw the teasers for this and the trailers, they were like, oh, what is this? And One Piece is so weird, like a big rubbery kid who's like, you know, Mr. Fantastic and like all these weird looking characters with, you know, decent looking prosthetics. You know, I'm not going to say the show broke the budget on, you know, it, it. the look it had was a step above a CW project, but not nearly as good as other things that we've seen. I mean, some of the sets were really good. I like the set pieces. And I thought the one of the best parts of it is the actors themselves. Really, the kid who played Luffy was really good, and a lot of the cameos I thought were really good, really really good. The guy with the big giant sword was really cool. I liked the the story with the with the captain, the cook, and the kid. So I think what happens here is is it, it was an interestingly told story where you get every, like a bunch of different perspectives. And you, if you looked at the logo, it would show you whose perspective we were going to follow on this. And each one of the crew members got their own backstory. And we got to learn a little bit about them and the islands that they came from and how they grew up and what was giving them their dreams. And if that Luffy kid couldn't pull off the earnestness of the character, the lead character, you were never going to have a success here. And I thought the kid was really good. They really cast some good people. I have no idea if he's anything like the manga or the anime, but he sure had a charm, a charisma that I really thought was good. So good for him, good for everybody. I think it turned out really well. I thought some of the cameos were some of the best parts. The clown pirate was really cool. Um, Tell me what was your favorite part. Did you enjoy, you know, which specifically did you enjoy? I, I know, like, it's obviously going to be set up for season two, but I have, it could have been, the Cowboy Bebop was set up for season two, and that didn't happen, so. But this is clearly a much bigger hit than that, obviously. Uh, and then the one thing I'd like to share with you, which I, I just, this is the horror moment of the show. Did a little research for you guys, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> humans were not meant to see one piece is rendered in hot toys style oh my word this i could do an entire thing just on this what is what are we looking at here this kid this does not look like the kid this does the, <laughs> this is just creeping me out man why does he look like a weird barbie monkey did luffy one six scale I think this is, <laughs> uh, I feel bad because I, I think the kid, the, the actual actor is like, wow, look, it's me, but a horror version of me. <laughs> like, what am I looking at here? Like, even the straw hat doesn't like really give me good straw hat vibes. It looks like a, I, just, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, Zoro looks pretty good. Um, it looks a little more jacked than the kid in the show, but <laughs> Monkey Lo Luffy. I also think Luffy's taller than that kid, so that's a little strange. But <laughs> I don't know. Sorry if I'm making fun of this, but this horror show just kind of I don't know. There's just something a little off about it. Uh, Uncanny Valley. <laughs> like, even the stretchy leg. Like, what what's going on here? What am I even looking at? Why is his leg stretching at me? Why has he got that grin on his face? Why is he smiling at me? What did I do to deserve this? I hope nothing. Please. Please. Oh, God. <laughs> I guess that's supposed to be gumma gum, gummy gum, whatever he was saying there. Like, what? Why? Oh, so you could articulate the arms to be long and such. Yeah, I just it's it's not it's the face, it's the face. I can't with the face. It just it's giving me separate rolling eyeballs. What? I don't want separate rolling eyeballs. What is that? What are you talking to me about? 
I don't know. It's like close, but so not close enough. But anyway, just wanted to share the horror of that. Uh, do I? Do we have a price here on this price check. Show. F- hold on. Five comments. Let's see what they have to say. Uh, <laughs> people don't like. Don't like the actor. Don't like the. I think the kid did a good job. I'm not going to criticize the kid. I think he did a good job. Um. All the actors, like I said, we're we're all added something kind of fun to this. So I don't know how much this was. Probably too much money. Probably too much money. So let me know. Would you buy this? Is this something that you're interested in? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check out our full-length audio podcast. That is on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, all those great places and more. You can listen to it for free. You can also catch us live stream that same podcast right here on YouTube, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. DM us on Instagram, whatever, whatever. But um, I'm done talking about pirates. How about you? Because I am on to the next one. Thank you.